Hi, it's Beth here. I'm over 65. I'm still talking. It's episode 215, April 24th, 2021. I met Audrey. I mean, it was no uh, cocooning for me. I got, we went over to her house last night. Oh my God, I haven't held a baby in 20 years. I'm not kidding. I don't live around family and I hear about all these grandbabies, but you really don't get to hold a newborn. You're not, you never get there till like 10 months later. That's the time that friends get to meet the baby. This baby was brand new. Oh my God. And it started out rocky. I mean, I'm the first person the baby has met outside of the parents because of the coronavirus and everything. So, you know, and Kit was there and Kit, of course, um, was very nice and let me hug the baby, which was going to happen anyway. I mean, it could have been a fight, struggle, whatever. I hugged the baby. I took the baby too soon. Just took it too soon. And it was, uh, I had to give the baby back. So, and then we walk around. She's got a great nursery, great parents. Everything's great. And we brought some um, dinner. So they wanted to eat dinner. So I got my second shot at the baby. We were sitting in a chair and I fed her a bottle. She was really not, not too pumped up about eating, honestly. It wasn't, you know, she was playing around with the nipple and having a good old time. And, you know, got a little cranky, but we talked. We talked about everything. She's got nice big hands. She could be a basketball player. I have no idea. Prettiest little face. Sweetest little baby. Not, I mean, thin, like a, almost like a bird. She's so fragile. I mean, boys just seem bigger and bulkier. This is, I think, my first girl infant that I hold, held maybe in 30 years. I don't get around girls very much. She's wonderful. We, we relaxed. We got into it. I got to hold her in this really uncomfortable position for like an hour and a half. I like like Ursula in The Little Mermaid. I don't care. She held my hand. She fell asleep. But before she fell asleep, we were talking. She's really, really sweet. They were laughing at the table. She turned to see the laugh. She's going to have a good personality. She's going to have a great life. She is beyond the pale the cutest little girl baby I've ever seen. And it's better than, I mean, I haven't had crack and I haven't had heroin. Much better than drinking. I mean, drinking is what I know best. This baby was spectacular. Spectacular. So we had the most wonderful time. I came home on a cloud. I'm still happy. I get it. Grandparenting is what is great. The grandparents all live in New York, both sides. They'll be down in a month. They they don't even, and they're both brand new first time grandparents. I mean, my, my cousin is going to go nuts. This, it's truly, it's like a miracle. You see it more as a miracle than you did the first time around. It's just amazing. So that's what I did. And then we came home and, um, we were getting in bed and we had a little altercation, which during the pandemic, things are just happening all the time because we don't, we're together all the time. So this altercation was he, Kit, accused me of stealing his pillow in the bed. I didn't. I was being framed. And his eyes, they were so accusatory. They were like, I don't know, like, uh, like Spencer Tracy and some playing a lawyer in a movie. There was no way out. So I said, look, if you don't stop this, your name's going to be mud. And he told me the story of how that name got started, how that expression got started. Okay, so, you know, Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth. This doctor, and, and when he jumped off the stage, he broke his leg. This doctor that took care of him, his name was Mud. And that's how the expression got started. They say it has something to do with an English book 100 years before, but I don't think anybody cared about that. This is the one. Your name is Mud. So I went looking up some other ones that are kind of cute. Break the ice. Okay, this one goes back to way 
way, way, hundreds of years ago, a hundred years ago, when they had to break up ice on rivers so countries could could visit each other. And if you broke the ice, then it was a country that you were friends with. If you didn't break the ice, it was your enemy. So breaking the ice, you know, that means that we're going to have a friendship. Okay, butter someone up. This one comes from India. And devoted people would throw butter balls at the statues of their favorite gods to seek favor and forgiveness. Okay, that's good. This one is my favorite, Mad Hatter. Okay, you didn't know this one from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. That's what I thought it was from. It's or, it, it originates from the 17th and the 18th centuries, well before Dr. Seuss. I mean, Dr. Seuss, that thing made me go crazy. Well before Lewis Carroll. Okay, so what happened was, in the 17th century in France, poisoning occurred among hat makers who used mercury for the felt in the hat. The mad, the mad Hatter disease was marked by shyness, irritability, and tremors, and it made somebody look mad. Mad Hatter disease. That one's good. Okay, most of them are like barking up the wrong tree. That's exactly what you think it is. It's hunting dogs, and they're barking up a tree, and nothing's up there. Okay, that makes sense. But this one is also very beautiful. Bearing the hatchet. This is a North American one with the Indians, and when they had a real peace pipe and a real coming to terms with an enemy, both sides would bury the hatchets, they would bury the knives, the clubs, and the tomahawks. And I just think that's sweet. So caught red-handed, this one is um, different than I thought it was too. I thought it was just murder. But it's actually, if you stole someone's animal and you butchered it, the only way you could get caught and get in trouble is if you had the animal's blood on your hands. And how they knew it was that exact animal's blood, I'm not sure. But anyway, but this one is gross. Okay, so don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. This one goes back to the 1500s when people took, you won't believe this, one bath a year. I'm surprised more people were born under these circumstances. The first one to take the bath, which does not make sense to me, was the master of the house, the man. First one, not last one, first one. I hate to be sexist, but I think, I don't know. Then the wife came after the husband in the bathtub. I mean, he must have ruled this roost with an iron fist. I just couldn't do that. And then subsequent children all the way down to the baby. And by the time the baby was in the bath water, it was dirty. You couldn't even see through it. So you didn't want to throw the baby out with the bath water. I, I'm sorry I even know that one. Okay, so letting one hair is now, down is just what you think it is. You always had to wear your hair up, and you could only let your hair down when you were home. Okay, this one is pretty cool. Um, sort of. I didn't realize that early Americans were this perfectionistic, but they were. I guess rich people have always been perfectionistic. But your servants, they would if they rubbed your oak floorboards the right way, it would look beautiful. If they rubbed it the wrong way, you'd get in trouble and almost lose your job because it wasn't perfect. And it just hadn't occurred to me that people would be that crazy even back then. I mean, not in America. This is in America. Of course, France and maybe England, but English people actually slept with dogs. And I don't know, Henry VIII didn't look too perfect to me, but the French kings did. But in America, early Americans were just as crazy as everyone else which is kind of comforting. I don't even care about all this. All I care about is Audrey. And I am going to be allowed to babysit, which is awesome, because the mom wasn't allowed to have sushi the entire pregnancy. There's a whole list of things that you can't have when you are pregnant. And um, sushi is one of them. Pineapples is one of them. Um, of course, oysters and shrimp and all that because of mercury. But I still can't find out what's the matter with pineapples, and I've been looking. So anyway, I, it might even be next week. I'm going to dress up. I'm going to do my hair. I'm going to put nail polish on. I'm going to get all dressed up for her because she deserves it. And she is so sweet. And probably by next week, she's going to change because that's what's so cool about newborns. They, little things happen every week, just like a puppy dog. You know, the eyes open more. They see more. They talk more. So, I mean, I'm going to meet a whole new baby next week. Audrey's going to be a week older. She'll be four weeks old next week, which is a month, which we're going to celebrate. So I'm sky high. Grandmothers, 
out there, grandfathers, you are so right about this. It is, you know, and her grandparents don't live here. So I'm going to be a pinch hitting grandma. I'm just going to take a lot of pressure off my son. And this little baby is worth it. And I never had a girl. And they're wonderful. So I'm so happy now. The pandemic, I mean, I see blue skies everywhere. I can't believe I had so much fun. Babies are everything. Babies are the best. So, I mean, I'm over 65. I feel like I'm more in the club now. Now that I'm getting what grandparenting feels like, even if I just got my little toe in the door, enough. It's way more than enough. I, I couldn't. I, my ne- I can't believe my neck isn't sore. I, I was in this awkward position. Couldn't stop looking at her. Didn't want to eat. Didn't want to talk to anybody. Just wanted to talk to Audrey. It's like, it's like creating a whole new universe of just sweetness and light and love and beauty and so anyway if you're a grandparent out there congratulations you hit the jackpot and I got a little taste of it so I'll be back but talk about keeping sane I maybe I got endomorphins or something that people get when they're happy I am happy today still I'm still happy I mean, I'm not, I probably won't even drink today. I don't even, I'm not even overeating. I am so happy. So this is it. This is it. This is Nirvana. So I made it. Stay sane. Even if you're not a grandparent, see if somebody will let you in the door. See if there's a baby out there that could use a grandparent. Surrogate grandparents. Whatever. It's the same. It's just love. The baby doesn't know. Babies are like, hmm, let me see your credentials. I'm not sure this will work out. No, babies, babies love you. So anyway, just see if you can, you know, kind of squirm your way in just like I did. Good luck with that. And I will be back. Thanks. Bye-bye.